स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज शेयर दिस वीडियो एज मच एज पॉसिबल ताकि हर बच्चे को इसकी हेल्प मिल सके उनके पास में भी ये ऑडियो बुक पहुंच सके चैप्टर टू सोल्यूशन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल प्रोसेस इन बॉडी अकर इन सम काइंड ऑफ लिक्विड सोल्यूशन इन नॉर्मल लाइफ वी रेयरली कम अक्रॉस प्योर सब्सटैंसेस मोस्ट ऑफ दीज आर मिक्सचर्स कंटेनिंग टू और मोर प्योर सब्सटैंसेस देयर यूटिलिटी और इंपॉर्टेंस इन लाइफ डिपेंड्स ऑन देयर कॉम्पोजिशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ब्रास मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर एंड जिंक आर क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दोज ऑफ जर्मन सिल्वर दैट इज मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर जिंक एंड निकल और ब्रॉन्स दैट इज मिक्सचर ऑफ कॉपर एंड टिन एंड वन पार्ट पर मिलियन दैट इज पी पी एम ऑफ फ्लोराइड आयंस इन वॉटर प्रिवेंट्स टूथ डिके वाइल वन पॉइंट फाइव पी पी एम कॉजेज द टूथ टू बिकम मॉटल्ड एंड हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ फ्लोराइड आयंस कैन बी पॉइजनस फॉर एग्जाम्पल सोडियम फ्लोराइड इज यूज इन रैट पॉइजन Intravenous injections are always dissolved in water containing salts at particular ionic concentrations that match with blood plasma concentrations and so on. In this unit we will consider mostly liquid solutions and their formation. This will be followed by studying the properties of the solutions like vapor pressure and colligative properties. We will begin with types of solutions and then various alternatives in which concentrations of solute can be expressed in liquid solution 2.1 types of solutions solutions are homogeneous mixtures of two or more than two components by homogeneous mixture we mean that its composition and properties are uniform throughout the mixture generally the component that is present in the largest quantity is known as solvent solvent determines the physical state in which solution exists one or more components present in the solution other than solvent are called solutes in the c unit we shall consider only binary solutions that is consisting of two components here each component may be solid liquid or in gaseous state and are summarized in table 2.1 types of solution solute solvent and common examples first one is gaseous solution gas liquid solid and solvents are gas and the common examples are mixture of oxygen and nitrogen gases chloroform mixed with nitrogen gas and camphor in nitrogen gas next type of solution is liquid solutions and the solute are again gas liquid solid and here the solvent are liquid in all three cases and the common examples are oxygen dissolved in water and ethanol dissolved in water and glucose dissolved in water third type of solution is solid solutions and the solute are gas liquid solid and the solvent is solid in all three cases and the common examples are solutions of hydrogen in palladium amalgam of mercury with sodium copper dissolved in gold 2.2 expressing concentration of solutions composition of solution can be described by expressing its concentration the latter can be expressed either qualitatively or quantitatively for example qualitatively we can say that the solution is dilute that is relatively very small quantity of solute or it is concentrated that is relatively very large quantity of solute but in real life these kinds of description can add to lot of confusion and thus the need for a quantitative description of the solution There are several ways by which we can describe the concentration of the solution quantitatively. Number 1, mass percentage. The mass percentage of component of a solution is defined as mass percentage of a component is equals to mass of the component in the solution upon total mass of the solution multiplied by 100. For example, if a solution is described by 10% glucose in water by mass it means that 10 g of glucose is dissolved in 90 g of water resulting in a 100 g solution concentration described by mass percentage is commonly used in industrial chemical applications for example commercial bleaching solution contains 3.62 mass percentage of sodium hypochlorite in water number 2 volume percentage the volume percentage is defined as volume percent of 
a component is equals to volume of the component upon total volume of solution into 100. For example, 10% of ethanol solution in water means that 10 ml of ethanol is dissolved in water such that the total volume of the solution is 100 ml. Solutions containing liquids are commonly expressed in this unit. For example, a 35% solution of ethylene glycol and antifreeze is used in cars for cooling the engine. At this concentration, the antifreeze lowers the freezing point of water to 255.4 K, that is minus 17.6 degrees Celsius. Number third, mass by volume percentage. Another unit which is commonly used in medicine and parf and pharmacy is mass by volume percentage. It is the mass of solute dissolved in 100 ml of the solution. Number fourth, parts per million. When a solute is present in trace quantities, it is convenient to express concentration in parts per million that is ppm and is defined as parts per million is equals to number of parts of the component upon total number of parts of all components of the solution into 10 to the power 6. As in the case of percentage, concentration in parts per million can also be expressed as mass to mass, volume to volume and mass to volume. A liter of sea water which weighs around 1030 gram contains about 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 gram of dissolved oxygen. Such a small concentration is also expressed a 5.8 gram per 10 to the power 6 gram that is 5.8 ppm of sea water. The concentration of pollutants in water our atmosphere is often expressed in terms of microgram per ml or ppm. Number fifth mole fraction commonly used symbol for mole fraction is x and subscript used on the right hand side of x denotes the component it is defined as mole fraction of a component is equals to number of moles of the component upon total number of moles of all the components for example in a binary mixture if the number of moles of a and b are na and nb respectively the mole fraction of a will be x a is equals to n a upon n a plus n b. For a solution containing i number of components, we have x i is equals to n i upon n 1 plus n 2 plus up to n i is equals to n i upon summation of n i. It can be shown that in a given solution, sum of all the mole fractions is unity that is x1 plus x2 plus x3 dash 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 plus xi and is equals to 1. Mole fraction unit is very useful in relating some physical properties of solutions. Say vapor pressure with the concentration of the solution and quite useful in describing the calculation involving gas mixtures. Number 6. Molarity. Molarity capital M is defined as number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 liter or 1 cubic decimeter of solution. Molarity is equals to moles of solute upon volume of solution in liter. Number seventh, molality. Molality small m is defined as the number of moles of the solute per kilogram of the solvent and is expressed as molality is equals to moles of solute upon mass of solvent in kilogram. For example, one mole per kg solution of KCl means that one mole that is 74.5 gram of KCl is dissolved in one kg of water. Each method of expressing concentration of the solutions has its own merits and demerits. Mass percentage, ppm, mole fraction and molality are independent of temperature. Whereas molarity is a function of temperature. This is because volume depends on temperature and the mass does not. 2.3 Solubility Solubility of a substance is its maximum amount that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent at a specified temperature. It depends upon the nature of solute and solvent as well as temperature and pressure. Let us consider the effect of these factors in solution of a solid or a gas in liquid. 2.3.1 Solubility of a solid in liquid Every solid does not dissolve in a given liquid. While sodium chloride and sugar dissolve readily in water, naphthalene and anthracene do not. Do not. On the other hand, naphthalene and anthracene dissolve readily in benzene, but sodium chloride and sugar do not. 
It is observed that polar solute dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar solutes in non-polar solvents. In general, a solute dissolves in a solvent if the intermolecular interactions are similar in the two or we may say like dissolves like. When a solid solute is added to the solvent, some solute dissolves and its concentration increases in solution. This process is known as the dissolution. Some solute particles in solution collide with the solid solute particles and get separated out of solution. This process is known as crystallization. A stage is reached when the two processes occur at the same rate. Under such conditions, number of solute particles going into solution will be equal to the solute particles separating out and a state of dynamic equilibrium is reached. Solute plus solvent is equivalent to the solution. At this stage, the concentration of solute in solution will remain constant under the given conditions, that is temperature and pressure. Similar process is followed when gases are dissolved in liquid solvents. Such a solution in which no more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature and pressure is called a saturated solution. An unsaturated solution is one in which more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature. The solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with undissolved solute is a saturated solution and contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved in given amount of solvent. Thus, the concentration of solute in such a solution is its solubility. Earlier, we have observed that solubility of one substance into another depends on the nature of the substances. In addition to these variables, two other parameters that is temperature and pressure also controls the phenomena. Effect of temperature. The solubility of a solid in a liquid is significantly affected by temperature changes. Consider the equilibrium represented by equation 2.0. This being dynamic equilibrium must follow Lee Chatelier's principle. In general, if in a nearly saturated solution, the dissolution process is endothermic, where it means delta H is greater than zero. The solubility should increase with rise in temperature, and if it is exothermic, it means delta H is less than zero. The solubility should decrease, these trends are also observed experimentally. Effect of pressure. Pressure does not have any significant effect on solubility of solids and liquids. It is so because solids and liquids are highly incompressible and practically remain unaffected by changes in pressure. 2.3.2 Solubility of gas in a liquid Many gases dissolved in water. Oxygen dissolved only to a small extent in water. It is this dissolved oxygen which sustains all aquatic life. On the other hand, Hydrogen chloride gas, HCl, is highly soluble in water. Solubility of gases in liquids is greatly affected by pressure and temperature. The solubility of gases increase with increase of pressure for solution of gases in a solvent. Consider a system as shown in figure 2.1a. The lower part is solution and the upper part is gaseous system at pressure P and temperature T. Assume this system to be in a state of dynamic equilibrium that is under these conditions the rate of gaseous particles entering and leaving the solution phase is the same. Now increase the pressure over the solution phase by compressing the gas to a smaller volume. This will increase the number of gaseous particles per unit volume over the solution and also the rate at which the gaseous particles are striking the surface of solution to enter it. The solubility of the gas will increase until a new equilibrium is reached, resulting in an increase in the pressure of a gas above the solution, and thus its solubility increases. Henry was the first to give a quantitative relation between pressure and solubility of gas in a solvent, which is known as Henry's law. The law states that at a constant temperature, the solubility of gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas present above the surface of liquid or solution. Dalton, a contemporary of Henry, also concluded independently that the solubility of gas in a liquid solution is a function of partial pressure of the gas. If we use the mole fraction of a gas in the solution as a measure of its solubility, then it can be said that the mole fraction of gas in the solution is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas over the solution. The most commonly used form of the Henry's law states that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase, that is P, is proportional to the mole fraction of the gas, that is X, in the solution. 
and is expressed as p is equals to khx. Here kh is the Henry's law constant. If we draw a graph between partial pressure of the gas versus mole fraction of the gas in solution, then we should get a plot of the type as shown in figure 2.2. Different gases have different KH values at the same temperature. This suggests that KH is a function of the nature of the gas. It is obvious from equation 2.11 that higher the value of KH at a given pressure, the lower is the solubility of the gas in the liquid. It can be seen from table 2.2 that KH values of both for N2 and O2 increases with increase of temperature, indicating that the solubility of the gases increases with decrease of temperature. It is due to the reason that aquatic species are more comfortable in cold waters rather than in warm water. Table 2.2 values of Henry's law constant for some selected gases in water. For helium, it is 144.97, H2 69.16, N2 76.48, N2 88.84, O2 34.86, O2 46.82, argon 40.3, CO2 1.67, formaldehyde 1.83 into 10 to the power minus 5, methane 0.413, vinyl chloride 0.611. Henry's law finds several applications in industry and explains some biological phenomena. Notable among these are to increase the solubility of CO2 in soft drinks and soda water, the bottle is sealed under high pressure. Scuba divers must cope with high concentration of dissolved gases while breathing air at high pressure underwater. Increased pressure increases the solubility of the atmospheric gases in blood. When the divers come towards surface, the pressure gradually decreases. This releases the dissolved gases and leads to the formation of bubbles of nitrogen in the blood. This blocks capillaries and creates a medical condition known as bends, which are painful and dangerous to life. To avoid bends as well as the toxic effect of high concentration of nitrogen in the blood, the tanks used by scuba drivers are filled with air diluted with helium. It is 11.7% helium, 56.2% nitrogen and 32.1% oxygen. At high altitudes, the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that the ground level. This leads to low concentrations of oxygen in the blood and tissues of people living at high altitudes or climbers. Low blood oxygen causes climbers to become weak and unable to think clearly. Symptoms of a condition known as anoxia. Effect of temperature. Solubility of gases in liquids decreases with rise in temperature. When dissolved, the gas molecules are present in liquid phase and the process of dissolution can be considered similar to condensation and heat is evolved in this process. We have learned in this last section that dissolution process involves dynamic equilibrium and thus must follow leach atelier's principle. As dissolution is an exothermic process, the solubility should decrease with increase of temperature. 2.4 Vapor Pressure of Liquid Solutions Liquid solutions are formed when solvent is a liquid. The solute can be a gas, a liquid or a solid. Solutions of gases in liquids have already been discussed in section 2.3.2. In this section, we shall discuss the solutions of liquids and solids in a liquid. Such solutions may contain one or more volatile components. Generally, the liquid solvent is volatile. The solute may or may not be volatile. We shall discuss the properties of only binary solutions, that is the solutions containing two components namely the solution of number one liquids in liquids and number two solids in liquids. 2.4.1 Vapor pressure of liquid liquid solutions. Let us consider a binary solution of two volatile liquids and denote the two components as one and two. When taken in a closed vessel, both the components would evaporate and eventually an equilibrium would be established between vapor phase and the liquid phase. Let the total vapor pressure at this stage be P total and P1 and P2 be the partial vapor pressures of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. These partial pressures are related to the mole fractions X1 and X2 of the two components 1 and 2 respectively. The French chemist Francois Marte Rolt 1886 gave the quantitative relationship between them. The relationship is known as the Raoult's law, which states 
that for a solution of volatile liquids, the partial vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in solution. Thus, for component 1, P1 is proportional to X1 and P1 is equals to P1 naught X1, where P naught 1 is the vapor pressure of pure component 1 at the same temperature. Similarly, for component 2, P2 is equals to P2 naught into X2, where P2 naught represents the vapor pressure of the pure component 2. According to Dalton's law of partial pressures, the total pressure P total over the solution phase in the container will be the sum of the partial pressures of the components of the solution and is given as P total is equals to P1 plus P2. Substituting the values of P1 and P2, we get P total is equals to X1 P1 naught plus X2 P2 naught. And the final equation come P1 naught plus in bracket P2 naught minus P1 naught bracket close X2. Following conclusions can be drawn from equation to number 1. Total vapor pressure over the solution can be related to the mole fraction of any one component. Number 2. The total vapor pressure over the solution varies linearly with the mole fraction of component 2. Third, depending on the vapor pressures of the pure components 1 and 2, total vapor pressure over the solution decreases or increases with the increase of mole fraction of component 1. A plot of P1 or P2 versus the mole fraction X1 and X2 for a solution gives a linear plot as shown in figure 2.3. These lines 1 and 2 pass through the points for which X1 and X2 are equal to unity. Similarly, the plot that is line third of P total versus X2 is also linear. Figure 2.3. The minimum value of P total is P1 naught and the maximum value is P2 naught. Assuming that component 1 is less volatile than component 2, that is P1 naught is less than P2 naught. The composition of vapor phase in equilibrium with the solution is determined by the partial pressures of the components. If Y1 and Y2 are the mole fractions of the components 1 and 2 respectively in the vapor phase then using Dalton's law of partial pressures, P1 is equals to Y1 P total, P2 is equals to Y2 P total and in general P1 is equals to Y1 P total. 2.4.2 Raoult's law as a special case of Henry's law. According to Raoult's law, the vapor pressure of a volatile component in a given solution is given by, by Pi is equals to Xi Pi naught in the solution of a gas in a liquid. One of the components is so volatile that it exists as a gas and we have already seen that its solubility is given by Henry's law which states P is equals to KHx. If we compare the equations for Raoult's law and Henry's law, it can be seen that the partial pressure of the volatile components or gas is directly proportional to its mole fraction in solution. Only the proportionality constant Kh differs from P1 naught. Thus, Raoult's law becomes a special case of Henry's law in which Kh becomes equal to P1 naught. 2.4.3 Vapor Pressure of Solutions of Solids in Liquids Another important class of solutions consists of solids dissolved in liquid. For example, sodium chloride, glucose, urea and cane sugar in water and iodine and sulfur dissolved in carbon disulfide. Some physical properties of these solutions are quite different from those of pure solvents. For example, vapor pressure. We have learned in Unit 5 in class 11 that liquids at a given temperature vaporize and under equilibrium conditions the pressure exerted by the vapors of the liquid over the liquid phase is called vapor pressure. In a pure liquid the entire surface is occupied by the molecules of the liquid. If a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent to give a solution, the vapor pressure of the solution is solely from the solvent alone. This vapor pressure of the solution at a given temperature is found to be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the same temperature. In the solution, the surface has both solute and solvent molecules. Thereby, the fraction of the surface covered by the solute molecules gets reduced. Consequently, the number of solvent molecules escaping from the surface is correspondingly reduced. Thus, the vapor pressure is also reduced. The decrease in vapor pressure of solvent depends on the quantity of non-volatile solute present in the solution, irrespective of its nature. For example, decrease in the vapor pressure of water by adding one mole of sucrose 
to 1 kilogram of water is nearly similar to that produced by adding 1 mole of urea to the same quantity of water at the same temperature. Rolle's law in its general form can be stated as for any solution the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component in the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction. In a binary solution let us denote the solvent by 1 and solute by 2. When the solute is non-volatile only the solvent molecules are present in vapor phase and contribute to vapor pressure. Let P1 be the vapor pressure of the solvent, X1 be its mole fraction, Pi0 be its vapor pressure in the pure state then according to the Raoult's law, P1 is proportional to X1 and P1 is equals to X1 P1 naught. The proportionality constant is equal to the vapor pressure of pure solvent P1 naught. A plot between the vapor pressure and the mole fraction of the solvent is linear. 2.5 ideal and non-ideal solutions. Liquid-liquid solutions can be classified into ideal and non-ideal solutions on the basis of Raoult's law. 2.5.1 Ideal Solutions The solutions which obey Raoult's law over the entire range of concentrations are known as ideal solutions. The ideal solutions have two other important properties. The enthalpy of mixing of the pure components to form the solution is zero and the volume of mixing is also zero. That is. Delta mix H is equals to 0 and delta mix V is equals to 0. It means that no heat is absorbed or evolved when the components are mixed. Also the volume of solution would be equal to the sum of volumes of the two components. At molecular level, at molecular level ideal behavior of the solutions can be explained by considering two components A and B. In pure components the intermolecular attractive interactions will be of types AA and BB, whereas in the binary solution, in addition to these two interactions, AB type of interactions will also be present. If the intermolecular attractive forces between AA and BB are nearly equal to those between AB, this leads to the formation of ideal solution. A perfectly ideal solution is rare, but some solutions are nearly ideal in behavior. Solution of an exane and heptane, bromoethane and chloroethane, benzene and toluene, etc. fall into this category. 2.5.2 Non-Ideal Solutions When a solution does not obey Raoult's law over the entire range of concentration, then it is called non-ideal solution. The vapor pressure of such a solution is either higher or lower than that predicted by Raoult's law. If it is higher, the solution exhibits positive deviation and if, and if it is lower, it exhibits negative deviation from Raoult's law. The plots of vapor pressure as a function of mole fractions for such solutions are shown in figure 2.6. The cause for these deviations lie in the nature of interactions at the molecular level. In case of positive deviation from Raoult's law, AB interaction are weaker than those between AA or BB that is in this case the intermolecular attractive forces between the solute solvent molecules are weaker than those between the solute solute and solvent solvent molecules. This means that in such solutions molecules of A or B will find it easier to escape than in pure state. This will increase the vapor pressure and result in positive deviation. Mixtures of ethanol and acetone behave in this manner. In pure ethanol, molecules are hydrogen bonded. On adding acetone, its molecules get in between the host molecules and break some of the hydrogen bonds between them. Due to weakening of interactions, the solution shows positive deviation from Raoult's law. In a solution formed by adding carbon disulfide to acetone, the dipolar interactions between solute solvent molecules are weaker than the respective interactions among the solute solute and solvent solvent molecules. This solution also shows positive deviation. In case of negative deviation from Raoult's law, the intermolecular attractive forces between AA and BB are weaker than those between AB and leads to decrease in vapor pressure resulting in negative deviations. An example of this type is a mixture of phenol and aniline. In this case, the intermolecular hydrogen bonding between phenolic proton and lone pair or nitrogen atom of aniline is stronger than the respective intermolecular hydrogen bonding between similar molecules. Similarly, a mixture of chloroform and acetone forms a solution with negative deviation from Raoult's law. 
This is because chloroform molecule is able to form hydrogen bond with acetone molecules as shown. This decreases the escaping tendency of molecules for each component and consequently the vapor pressure decreases resulting in negative deviation from Raoult's law. Some liquids on mixing form azeotropes which are binary mixtures having the same composition in liquid and vapor phase and boil at a constant temperature. In such cases, it is not possible to separate the components by fractional distillation. There are two types of azeotropes called minimum boiling azeotrope and maximum boiling azeotrope. The solutions which show a large positive deviation from Raoult's law form minimum boiling azeotrope at a specific composition. For example, ethanol water mixture obtained by fermentation of sugars on fractional distillation gives a solution containing approximately 95% by volume of ethanol. Once the composition known as azeotrope composition has been achieved, the liquid and vapor have the same composition and no further separation occurs. The solutions that show large negative deviation from Raoult's law form maximum boiling azeotrope at a specific composition. Nitric acid and water is an example of this class of azeotrope. The azeotrope has the approximate composition 68% nitric acid and 32% water by mass with a boiling point of 393.5 K. 2.6 Colligative Properties and Determination of Molar Mass We have learned in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of solution decreases when a non-volatile solute is added to a volatile solvent. There are many properties of solutions which are connected with this decrease of vapor pressure. These are number one, relatively lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent. Number two, depression of freezing points of the solvent. Number third, elevation of boiling point of the solvent. And number fourth, osmotic pressure of the solution. All these properties depend on the number of solute particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution. Such properties are called colligative properties. In the following section, we will discuss these properties one by one. 2.6.1 Relative Lowering of Vapor Pressure We have learned in section 2.4.3 that the vapor pressure of a solvent in solution is less than that of the pure solvent. Raoult established that the lowering of vapor pressure depends only on the concentration of the solute particles and it is independent of their identity. The equation given in section 2.4.3 establishes a relation between vapor pressure of the solution, mole fraction and vapor pressure of the solvent, that is P1 is equals to X1 P1 naught. The reduction in the vapor pressure of solvent delta P1 is given as delta P1 is equals to P1 naught minus P1, it is equals to P1 naught minus P1 naught into X1 where we will take common P1 naught and in the bracket 1 minus X1 will remain. Knowing that X2 is equals to 1 minus X1, then it reduces to delta P1 is equals to X2 P1 naught. In a solution containing several non-volatile solutes, the lowering of the vapor pressure depends on the sum of the mole fraction of different solutes. The expression of the left hand side of the equation as mentioned earlier is called relative lowering of vapor pressure and is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. The above equation can be written as P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equals to N2 upon N1 plus N2. Since X2 is equals to N2 upon N1 plus N2, here N1 and N2 are the number of moles of solvent and solute respectively present in the solution. For dilute solution, N2 is very very less than N1, hence neglecting N2 in the denominator, we have P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equals to N2 upon N1 or P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equals to W2 into M M1 upon M2 into W1, where W1 and W2 are the masses and M1 and M2 are the molar masses of the solvent and solute respectively. From this equation, knowing all other quantities, the molar mass of solute M2 can be calculated. 2.6.2 Elevation of Boiling Point We have learned in Unit 5, Class 11, that the vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increase of temperature. It boils at the temperature at which its vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. 
For example, water boils at 373.15 Kelvin, that is 100 degrees Celsius, because at this temperature, the vapor pressure of water is 1.013 bar, that is 1 atmosphere. We have also learned in the last section that vapor pressure of the solvent decreases in the presence of non-volatile solute. Figure 2.7 depicts that the variation of vapor pressure of the pure solvent and solution as a function of temperature. For example, the vapor pressure of an aqueous solution of sucrose is less than 1.013 bar at 373.15 K. In order to make the solution boil, its vapor pressure must be increased to 1.013 bar by raising the temperature above the boiling temperature of the pure solvent water. Thus, the boiling point of a solution is always higher than that of the boiling point of the pure solvent in which the solution is prepared as shown in figure 2.7. Similar to lowering of vapor pressure, the elevation of boiling point also depends on the number of solutes molecules rather than their nature. A solution of 1 mole of sucrose in 100 gram of water boils at 373.52 K at 1 atmospheric pressure. Let T be naught be the boiling point of pure solvent and Tb the boiling point of the solution. The increase in the boiling point is equals to delta Tb is equals to Tb minus Tb0 is known as elevation of boiling point. Experiments have shown that for dilute solution, the elevation of boiling point delta Tb is directly proportional to the molar concentration of the solute in a solution. Thus, delta Tb is proportional to M or delta Tb is equals to KBM. Here M, that is molality, is the number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kg of solvent and the constant of proportionality, Kb is called boiling point elevation constant or molal elevation constant or ebulioscopic constant. The unit of Kb is K per kilogram. The unit of Kb is K kilogram per mole Values of Kb for some common solvents are given in table 2.3. If W2 gram of solute of molar mass M2 is dissolved in W1 gram of solvent, then molality M of the solution is given by the expression M is equals to W2 upon M2 upon W1 upon 1000. And the final formula is here. M2 is equals to 1000 into W2 into Kb upon delta Tb into W1. Thus, in order to determine M2 molar mass of the solute, known mass of the solute in known mass of the solvent is taken and delta Tb is determined experimentally for a known solvent whose Kb value is known. 2.6.3 Depression of Freezing Point The lowering of vapor pressure of a solution causes a lowering of the freezing point compared to that of the pure solvent. We know that at the freezing point of a substance, the solid phase is in dynamic equilibrium with the liquid phase. Thus, the freezing point of a substance may be defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance in its liquid phase is equal to its vapor pressure in the solid phase. A solution will freeze when its vapor pressure equals the vapor pressure of the pure solid solvent as is clear from figure 2.8. According to Raoult's law, when a non-volatile solid is added to the solvent, its vapor pressure decreases and now it would become equal to that of solid solvent at lower temperature. Thus, the freezing point of the solvent decreases. Let Tf0 be the freezing point of pure solvent and Tf be its freezing point when non-volatile solute is dissolved in it. The decrease in freezing point delta Tf is equals to Tf0 minus Tf is known as dispersion in freezing point. Similar to elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point delta Tf for dilute solution, that is ideal solution is directly proportional to molality. Delta Tf is proportional to M and delta Tf is equals to Kfm, the proportional T constant Kf which depends on the nature of the solvent is known as freezing point depression constant or molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant. The unit of Kf is K kg per mole. Values of Kf for some common solvents are listed in table 2.3. If W2 gram of the solute having molar mass as M2 present in W1 gram of solvent produces the depression in freezing point Delta Tf of the solvent, then molality of the solute is given by the equation M is equals to W2 upon M2 
upon W1 upon 1000. And substituting the value of molality in equation, you will get the final formula M2 is equals to Kf into W2 into 1000 upon delta Tf into W1. Thus, for determining the molar mass of the solute, we should know the quantities of W1, W2, delta Tf along with the molar freezing point depression constant. The values of Kf and Kb which depend upon the nature of the solvent can be ascertained from the following relation. Kf is equals to R into M1 into Tf square upon 1000 into delta H where delta H is delta H of fusion and Kb is equals to R into M1 into Tb square upon 1000 into delta H of vaporization. Here the symbols R and M1 stands for the gas constant and molar mass of the solvent respectively and Tf and Tb denote the freezing point and the boiling point of the pure solvent respectively in Kelvin. Further delta fusion H and delta vaporization H represent the enthalpies for the fusion and vaporization of the solvent respectively. Please check the table 2.3 of molar boiling point, elevation and freezing point, depression constant for some solvents. 2.6.4 Osmosis and Osmotic Pressure There are many phenomena which we observe in nature are at home. For example, raw mangoes shrivel when picked in brine salt water. Wilted flowers revive when placed in fresh water. Blood cells collapse when suspended in saline water, etc. If we look into these processes, we find one thing common in all, that is all these substances are bound by membranes. These membranes can be animal or vegetable origin and these occur naturally, such as pig's bladder or parchment or can be synthetic, such as cellophane. These membranes appear to be continuous sheet or films, yet they contain a network of submicroscopic holes or pores. Small solvent molecules like water can pass through these holes but the passage of bigger molecule like solute is hindered. Membranes having this kind of properties are known as semi-permeable membrane SPM. Assume that only solvent molecules can pass through these semi-permeable membrane. If this membrane is placed between the solvent and solution as shown in figure 2.9, the solvent molecules will flow through the membrane from pure solvent to the solution. This process of flow of the solvent is called osmosis. The flow will continue till the equilibrium is attained. The flow of the solvent from its side to solution side across a semi-permeable membrane can be stopped if some extra pressure is applied on the solution. This pressure that just stops the flow of solvent is called osmotic pressure of the solution. The flow of solvent from dilute solution to concentrated solution across a semi-permeable membrane is due to osmosis. The important point to be kept in mind is that solvent molecules always flow from lower concentration to higher concentration of solution. The osmotic pressure has been found to depend on the concentration of the solution. The osmotic pressure of a solution is the excess pressure that must be applied to a solution to prevent osmosis, that is to stop the passage of solvent molecules through a semi-permeable membrane into the solution. This is illustrated in figure 2.10. Osmotic pressure is a colligative property as it depends on the number of solute molecules and not on their identity. For dilute solution, it has been found experimentally that osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity C of the solution at a given temperature T. For dilute solutions, it has been found experimentally that osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity C of the solution at a given temperature T. And the final formula is M2 is equals to W2 RT upon V. Thus knowing the quantities, we can calculate the molar mass of the solute. Measurement of osmotic pressure provides another method of determining molar masses of solutes. This method is widely used to determine molar masses of proteins, polymers and other macromolecules. The osmotic pressure method has the advantage over other methods as pressure measurement is around the room temperature and the molarity of the solution is used instead of molality. As compared to other colligative properties, its magnitude is large even for very dilute solutions. The technique of osmotic pressure for determination of molar mass of solutes is particularly useful for biomolecules as they are generally not stable at higher temperatures and polymers have poor solubility. Two solutions having same osmotic pressure at a given temperature are called isotonic solutions. When such solutions are separated by semi-permeable membrane, 
No osmosis occurs between them. For example, the osmotic pressure associated with the fluid inside the blood cell is equivalent to that of 0.9% sodium chloride solution called normal saline solution and it is safe to inject intravenously. On the other hand, if we place the cells in a solution containing more than 0.9%, sodium chloride water will flow out of the cells and they would shrink. Such a solution is called a hypertonic. If the salt concentration is less than 0.9%, the solution is said to be hypotonic. In this case, water will flow into the cells if placed in the solution and they would smell and they would swell. The phenomena mentioned in the beginning of this section can be explained on the basis of osmosis. A raw mango placed in concentrated salt solution losses water via osmosis and shrivel into pickle. Wilted flowers revive when placed in fresh water. A carrot that has become limp because of water loss into the atmosphere can be placed into the water, making it firm once again. Water will move into its cell through osmosis. When placed in water containing less than 0.9% salt, blood cells swell due to flow of water in them by osmosis. People taking a lot of salt or salty food experience water retention in tissue cells and intercellular spaces because of osmosis. The resulting puffiness or swelling is called edema. Water movement from soil into plant roots and subsequently into upper portion of the plant is partially due to osmosis. The preservation of meat by salting and of fruits by adding sugar protects against bacterial action. Through the process of osmosis, the bacterium on salted meat or candied fruit losses, water shrivels and dies. 2.6.5 Reverse Osmosis and Water Purification The direction of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution side. That is now the pure solvent flows out of the solution through the semi-permeable membrane. This phenomenon is called reverse osmosis and is of great practical utility. Reverse osmosis is used in desalinization of seawater. A schematic setup for the process is shown in figure 2.11. When pressure more than osmotic pressure is applied, pure water is squeezed out of the seawater through the membrane. A variety of polymer membranes are available for this purpose. The pressure required for the reverse osmosis is quite high. A workable porous membrane is a film of cellulose acetate placed over a suitable support. Cellulose acetate is permeable to water but impermeable to impurities and ions present in seawater. These days many countries use desalination plants to meet their potable water requirements. 2.7 Abnormal Molar Masses We know that ionic compounds when dissolved in water dissociate into cations and anions. For example, if we dissolve one mole of KCl in water, we expect one mole each of potassium and chloride ions to be released in the solution. If this happens, there would be two moles of particles in the solution. If we ignore interionic interaction, one mole of KCl and one kilogram of water would be expected to increase the boiling point by 2 into 0.52 Kelvin, which is equal to 1.04 Kelvin. Now, if we did not know about the degree of dissociation, we could be led to conclude that the mass of 2 mole particles is 74.5 gram and the mass of 1 mole of KCl would be 37.25 gram. This brings into light the rule that where there is dissociation of solute into ions, the experimentally determined molar mass is always lower than the true value. Molecules of ethanoic acid that is acidic acid dimerize in benzene due to hydrogen bonding. This normally happens in solvents of low dielectric constant. In this case, the number of particles is reduced due to dimerization. Association of molecules is depicted as follows. It can be undoubtedly stated here that if all the molecules of ethanoic acid associate in benzene, that delta Tb or delta Tf for ethanoic acid will be half of the normal value. The molar mass calculated on the basis of this delta Tb or delta Tf will therefore be twice the expected value. Such a molar mass that is either lower or higher than the expected or normal value is called as abnormal molar mass. In 1880, Wonthoff introduced a factor I known as the Wonthoff factor to account for the extent of dissociation or association. This factor I is defined as 
I is equals to normal molar mass is equals to abnormal molar mass and the final formula is and then again I is equals to total number of moles of particles after association or dissociation upon number of moles of particles before association or dissociation. Here abnormal molar mass is the experimentally determined molar mass and calculated colligative properties are obtained by assuming that the non-volatile solute is neither associated nor dissociated. In case of association value of I is less than unity while for dissociation it is greater than unity. For example, the value of I for aqueous KCl solution is close to 2 while the value for ethanoic acid in benzene is nearly 0.5. Inclusion of want of factors modifies the equations for colligative properties as follows. Relative lowering of vapor pressure of solvent P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equals to I N2 upon N1. Elevation of boiling point delta T B is equals to I KBM. Depression of freezing point delta T F is equals to I KFM. Osmotic pressure of solution is equals to I N2 R T upon V. Table 2.4 depicts values of the factor I for several strong electrolytes for KCl, NaCl and MgSO4. I values approach 2 as the solution becomes very dilute. As expected, the values of I gets close to 3 for K2SO4. Summary. A solution is homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Solutions are classified as solid, liquid and gaseous solutions. The concentration of a solution is expressed in terms of mole fraction, molarity, molality and in percentages. The dissolution of a gas in a liquid is governed by Henry's law, according to which at given temperature the solubility of gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas. The vapor pressure of the solvent is lowered by the presence of non-volatile solute in the solution and this lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent is governed by Raoult's law according to which the relative lowering of vapor pressure of the solvent over a solution is equal to the mole fraction of a non-volatile solute present in the solution. However, in a binary liquid solution, if both the components of the solution are volatile, then another form of Raoult's law is used. Mathematically, this form of the Raoult's law is stated as P total is equals to P1 naught X1 plus P2 naught X2. Solutions which obey Raoult's law over the entire range of concentration are called ideal solutions. Two types of deviations from Raoult's law called positive and negative deviations are observed. Azeotropes arise due to very large deviation from Raoult's law. The properties of solutions which depend on the number of solute particles and are independent of their chemical identity are called colligative properties. These are lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point and osmotic pressure. The process of osmosis can be reversed if a pressure higher than the osmotic pressure is applied to the solution. Colligative properties have been used to determine the molar mass of solutes. Solutes which dissociate in solution exhibit molar mass lower than the actual molar mass and those which associate show higher molar mass than their actual values. Quantitatively, the extent to which a solute is dissociated or associated can be expressed by want of factor I. This factor has been defined as ratio of normal molar mass to experimentally determined molar mass or as the ratio of observed colligative property to the calculated colligative property. Chapter completed. Thank you so much. Students, please share this video as much as possible. Thank you once again.